Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I have a tutorial to share with you. We are going to be making some ancient Roman sandals and we're getting a lot of inspiration from this book called Classical Kids, an activity guide to life in ancient Greece and Rome by Laurie Carlson. So we don't have exactly the correct materials to do this, so I'm going to show you some of the alterations that we are making. However, I think that you'll get better results if you follow the directions a little bit better. We're going to start out by making our pattern. I've got my seven-year-old daughter here and I just have her standing on some paper. And though this worked pretty well, the book does recommend using something a little bit heavier like a paper bag. And that will definitely be a good idea if you intend to use these again. So I'm just tracing out her feet. It's super simple and then you wanna cut them out. And this part would be great for the children to do since it was pretty straightforward and simple. Now this is going to be an upcycling project for us and so I have a bag of remnant leather pieces and I'm just going to try to fit one with our pattern. If you were doing this from scratch then you would probably need a larger piece of fabric so that you can get those loops on either side of the shoe in order for it to be worn correctly with the straps going through the loops. We only had enough space to do one of those loops and you're gonna see I'm just gonna freehand it here and do it on this side because our leather pieces are super tiny and they're actually just barely big enough just to get these two little shoes in. And so my 11 year old son didn't get a pair out of this material. We were able just to make them out of regular fabric. Okay, so now that that's done, I wanna just cut out that little center part for the loop. And I, again, I'm just freehanding this. I am not drawing this out on the pattern and it works out just fine. This is just for our homeschool main lesson block in ancient Roman history. If you want to get more technical with this, then you certainly could get a little bit more precise with this and use your pattern more carefully. So I went ahead and I cut out the other piece and you can see they're not quite symmetrical but they work out just fine in the end. Now it's time to make that long strip of leather and the book suggests using a circular piece of fabric and then cutting it the same way that I'm doing but in a circular fashion. That way the pieces are long strips. And this works just fine. You can see that it does curl up a little bit in some places but overall I think the results are pretty good. All right, so now it's time to thread our shoe. And pretty early on, I'm gonna realize that we are running into a problem since I only have those two loops. So I just wanna show you what it's gonna look like as I try to pretty much fasten this onto my daughter's feet. So I've got her up here on our desk and I'm just gonna start to wind these together. And at first it looks pretty good, but I've run into my first problem here where I don't know where to add the straps around. And if I just do what I'm doing now, then it's just gonna fall off her foot. So I wrap it underneath her foot instead. And while this seems like a pretty good solution temporarily, if she walks on it for any length of time, then that bottom strap is actually gonna wear down and break. So. Back to the drawing board. So I'm gonna have her take them off and I'm going to make these little tiny holes instead of these long loopy straps. So I'm just gonna go through and do two in the front which actually were unnecessary and they ended up causing a little bit of complication when I actually finally strapped these shoes onto my daughter. And then I did two more on either side and then I just repeated the same pattern on the other side of the shoe. So that you can see there are four holes in the bottom and two on the top. And then in the last minute, I decide to add one more set, which actually wasn't really necessary. So a total of six towards the bottom and two at the top. So now it's time to try this again and see if it works any better. So I've got my daughter up here on the table and we're gonna try to just kind of fasten them together. So I think I'll sort of make them like flip flops so that they kind of go through her toes in the front. And then I'm just going to lace them back and forth in a crisscross fashion, like you were lacing up shoes. It's just that now the whole lace is pretty much the entire shoe rather than lacing just say the top of a shoe. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure that I'm getting these laces in the correct spot. And you can see that the leather isn't super great because the strand that we cut it from was not circular, but it was more oblong. And you can see some of those problems at the front of the foot. But again, for this kind of project for kids, I think that it works just fine. It was super simple. It was really easy to do. It didn't take more than about a half an hour from start to finish, even with all of our mistakes. And my daughter really liked them in the 
the end. And the last thing I want to do is just wrap it around her ankle a couple of times and then just secure it with a knot. And when I do this, I actually pull it a little bit too tight and I tear the leather. So that's something else to be a little bit careful with when you are actually tying this off. Okay, so this is what they look like when they're done. They fit pretty well and my daughter really enjoys this. We're doing this as part of our ancient Roman main lesson block and you can see that she's got her toga on which she made by herself and now she's got the shoes to match which looked pretty good with her outfit. Okay, so if you want to see some of the other projects we are doing with our Ancient Roman main lesson block, you can tap on the screen right now. And don't forget that if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.